Sometimes just one act of kindness can change someone's life, but what if the roles were reversed? One act of kindness changed this kind-hearted waitress's life forever. She showed compassion to a homeless man, but everyone was stunned when they found out who he really was. Emily had always known what she wanted to do, even from a young age, and that never changed. She wanted to be a chef. She grew up in a small family in Canada. Though her family wasn't wealthy, they always managed to have what they needed when they needed it. They lived comfortably, without any luxuries, and were content with what they had. The young girl had two siblings, her brother Bruce and her sister Melissa. Their mother was a teacher, though none of the children attended the school where she worked. Their father was a chef at a restaurant just a few blocks away from their home. Each morning, on their way to school, the children would wave to him as he was already busy cooking at the restaurant. Emily's father had the biggest influence on her life. She always looked forward to visiting the restaurant so she could watch her dad work his magic. Her dad, Joe, was the best chef in their city. One day, Emily told her dad that she wanted to be a chef, just like him. I remember saying to him, he make many people happy. I want to make many people happy as well. I want to be like you. From that moment, I knew this was what I wanted to do with my life," Emily recalled. Joe was known for his poutine, Nova Scotian lobster rolls, and bannock, but his poutine stood out as one of the best dishes he made. Many described it as the best poutine they had ever tasted. At the age of six, Emily started learning the recipe from her father. During the summer holidays, her dad allowed her to earn a salary for helping him at the restaurant. They had a happy family, and Emily always said that her dad lived the happiest life she could imagine. One reason why Joe was loved in his community was because of his kindness. Some families stopped visiting the restaurant because they could no longer afford the meals. When Joe noticed this, he would surprise the family by delivering enough poutine for everyone to their home. Occasionally, he would surprise them with other dishes as well. He was also known for helping homeless people in any way he could. Joe and his wife, Rachel, made sure they instilled the spirit of kindness in all their children. By the age of 14, Emily, the youngest, had already learned to make more than half the meals in the restaurant. However, a year before Emily got to college, something terrible happened. Joe was diagnosed with prostate cancer. He became so sick that he couldn't run the restaurant anymore. Everyone always knew that Emily would take over the restaurant one day, but the family ended up selling it to help cover medical bills. Saving Joe was their priority. A few days after selling the restaurant and just a week before Joe's major surgery, he passed away. The family was heartbroken, and it took them a while to move on. They were now poor, but this didn't stop Emily from pursuing her dreams. She knew that's what her father would have wanted. Emily wanted to be a chef, but unlike her father, she wanted to learn how to make other cuisines, not just Canadian dishes. A year after her father died, she moved to the U.S. She had an American passport, so her transition was quite easy. She wanted to attend culinary school, so she had to find a job to help pay for tuition and rent. Emily now lives in New York, and luckily, she got a job at one of the most prestigious restaurants in the city. She was hired as a waitress. Her experience helping her father proved useful and helped her ace the interview. Her salary was enough to cover her needs, and the job hours never interfered with her education. The job was perfect for her new life, and living in a new city helped her heal from her father's death. However, despite the perks of her new job, it had one major downside. She had a horrible boss. Lucas wasn't just a slave driver, he spoke horribly to his employees. He didn't appreciate their hard work, and he often crushed their confidence with his harsh remarks. A week after starting work at the restaurant, Emily noticed a homeless man just around the corner, about five minutes from her workplace. However, this man was different from other homeless people. He wasn't pleading for money or food, and he always had a smile on his face. He never begged for anything, which was quite strange. How does he manage to stay happy despite everything? Emily thought to herself. I wouldn't be able to stay happy under the same circumstances. He held the same sign every day. It simply read, I just need someone to talk to. Do you want to chat? Emily asked him one day. The young Canadian girl was worried about the man. Some people walked by without paying attention to him. 
Others looked at him with pity. Some even gave him money, even though he never asked for it. Once, Emily even saw some boys spit in his cup for no reason at all. Emily wanted to help him, but she didn't know how. She wanted to do more than just talk with him. She wanted to help him get off the streets. She always thought of her father in these moments and asked herself, what would Joe have done? Then, she had an idea. She became friends with the man. Whenever she had time, she would stop and chat with him for a few minutes. One day, she asked him if she could bring him food, and he agreed. Emily was excited to help him. She used her father's recipe to make poutine for him. However, she didn't have enough money to buy the ingredients, but she was determined to help the man and would go to any lengths to do so. So, she took what she needed from the restaurant's supplies, hoping her boss wouldn't notice. Would Lucas find out or not? Emily was thrilled when she got home and made the meal for the homeless man, Peter. When I gave it to him, he said it was the best meal he had ever tasted, but he also said it felt like he had tasted it before, Emily recalled. Emily cooked for him three more times after that, and that's when Lucas noticed a reduction in the restaurant's food supplies. What she didn't know was that there was a CCTV camera in the store recording everything. One day, Lucas called her into his office, berated her with all sorts of insults, and then fired her. How will I pay for school and rent now? Emily cried all the way home. When Peter saw her, he didn't let her leave until she told him what had happened. He brought her back to the restaurant and spoke to Lucas with such authority that Emily was taken aback, wondering who this man really was. Lucas, however, responded by throwing them both out of the restaurant. But Peter stood his ground. You don't recognize me, do you? He said to Lucas. Peter took off his dirty jacket, and Lucas's eyes widened in recognition. I'm not homeless. I'm actually a food critic, and I evaluate menu quality and service. A few weeks ago, I came here for another review, and I noticed that things had gotten much worse. The service was great, but the food was far below standard, and that's on you, Lucas. So I decided to take action. Last week, I bought the majority of shares in this restaurant. That's right. I'm now the owner of this place, Peter said. He fired Lucas on the spot and made Emily the new chef of the restaurant. You're ready, he said to her. Your food proved that. Remember what I said about tasting your pouting before? I think I know why. Are you Joe's daughter? Peter revealed that his family had been one of those that Joe had provided with free meals. Who could have imagined that Emily would one day benefit from her father's kindness? It's truly amazing. Emily now had everything she needed, and a few years later, she got married. I'm really keen to know your thoughts on this story, so please don't hesitate to share your insights in the comments section below. If you enjoyed this video and found it engaging, I invite you to subscribe to our channel for more similar content. Feel free to share this video, take good care of yourselves, and I'm excited to connect with you in our future videos.